Today we're in Hollywood, California, right behind the Roosevelt Hotel, and in just a few moments, a tour van is gonna be pulling up right over there, and I'm gonna be getting on it. Uh, me and my son, I brought him with me today. He's the one holding the camera right now. We're gonna be jumping on this tour van and taking a little Hollywood tour. Now, this isn't the average Hollywood tour. You know, if you walk down Hollywood Boulevard, they've got all those vans that will drive you around Hollywood and show you the movie stars' homes and stuff like that. This is not like those tours. This is uh, specifically a filming location tour. It's called the Film Freaks Hollywood Tour. And the owner, Leo, invited me to come down and check out this tour because he knows that I do a lot of filming locations on my channel. Obviously, he knows my channel is 80s Life. So he told me that he does mention quite a few 80s and 90s movies on his tour. And that's really all I know about it. So it should be a good time. I'm bringing you with me. So if you're ready, let's go see what we can find. All right, we're about to go get on our tour and looking at the stars that are in front of the Roosevelt Hotel, you're in good company as far as 80s stars go. Patrick Swayze. Yeah, Winona Ryder. Yeah, Randy Quaid, Vacation. Mr. Axel Foley himself, Eddie Murphy. Kirstie Alley. Ed McMahon. This goes on and on and on. Now this is it. This is our tour for today. The Film Freak Movie Location Tour. All right. Cool. All right, let's go. Oh, hey, oh. Flux capacitor. Where do you think we get our power from? Nice. Uh, I love it. You guys, um, the first row is like an IMAX seat. Okay. The second row is probably perfect. Perfect. Okay. Let's do that then. Okay, so I gotta say, first of all, we've got the flux capacitor. He's got the video screen right there. And every row has a sound bar with volume control and a USB charging port. I mean, how cool is that? Kurt, you oh! These are VIPs. VIPs! These are yours to keep, and there's special deals and offers on the VIP laminate, like to pinks or to icons of darkness. My son got excited. What do we got here? Hold on, let me focus on that. Free fries or onion rings at Pink. Wow, free fries or onion rings. Man, so far this tour is, uh, it's looking good so far. Oh, he was just telling us. experience. Worked for Rick Dees. Mostly in radio. Okay. And uh, I worked for the Howard Stern station where I did the Film Freak show for about 25 years. And the Film Freak is just liking your favorite movie and not having to defend it, you know? <laughs> hey, you know what? If I like Dumb and Dumber, that's my business. You don't have to worry about it. So, stand proud. What 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 years did you work for Rick Dees? Uh, from 1987 nice. to 1997. I went from an intern to an on-air personality at Kiss FM. And in 1997, I hosted the very first Mission Impossible world premiere with Jenny McCarthy. Uh, we co-hosted it, but... Uh, you were at KISS FM like at the perfect time, the yeah, 80s and 90s. 80s and 90s. Nice. Rick Dees was just huge. You know what? I happen to think that in the TV show I Love Lucy, when Lucy, Ricky, Ethel, and Fred, when they came out to Hollywood for a season, I think they stayed at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel. I can't confirm it, but it sure seems like it, right? So here we go. Uh, special guests on board, uh, Kurt. Uh, a, a notable blogger is on board. All right, here we go, Beatles fans. John, Paul, George, and Ringo all had a pint on the right-hand side at this place called the Powerhouse Cocktail Bar. It's coming up in three, two, one. There it is right there. And they have PBRs for $3 a piece. Now, this church, um, Sister Act 2 with Whoopi Goldberg, also Wedding Crashes, w Wedding Crashers with Vince Vaughn, and Owen Wilson, and also this church on the property, it's over 100 years old, uh, there is a gym, and the gym is used primarily for filming because there are no kids Monday through Friday 
uh, and it's it's easier to film scenes there. And one scene that was filmed in the gym was the Enchantment Under the Sea dance. Yes, Marty McFly busted out some Chuck Berry. And also shot there, Tom Hanks's writing and directorial debut, a great movie called That Thing You Do, also filmed inside the gym. Wonders. Everybody. We're coming up on the right-hand side where you're going to see the Magic Castle. It is up on the right-hand side. And you know what? Milt Larson, the founder, we just lost him, darn it. 92 years old. He left a legacy. And then on top of that is a Japanese restaurant called Yamashiro. And Yamashiro is a place where you get the most majestic views of Los Angeles. But this is rock and roll, Ralph, and this is the first time we ever saw Jeff Bridges as the dude in the Big Lebowski in the dairy section. Take a look. But sometimes there's a man. Sometimes there's a man. Wow. Lost my train of thought here. Now, a story about Hollywood resident director Quentin Tarantino. Quentin Tarantino believes that um, if you make it in Hollywood, you owe it to yourself to own a residence in Hollywood. He lives about five to seven minutes away. And if you're going to catch Quentin Tarantino, the best place to catch him on a night off from directing is right across the street. This place called El Compadre. And El Compadre is a, a great Mexican restaurant. And they do have amazing uh, flaming margaritas, which are a cause of a great time or a bad hangover. But my wife, Holly, and I, last time we were there, Quentin Tarantino was there at the bar. And we got into a debate on whether I should get a selfie or not. He was in a conversation. I ended up not getting the selfie. Kurt, did I make the right decision? Probably. What are you doing? Can you, can you not talk to me? Just for, uh, just for the... What are you doing? Coming up on the left-hand side, this is a round building, lime green building. Now this... This is a recording studio that is owned by Mark Mothersbaugh on the left. Now he is the actual, one of the actual members of Devo, and he does film scores now. He scored the Rugrats movie, he also scored a movie for Netflix called The Mitchells vs. The Machines, right there. And then we're coming up on a, on a sad, sad, well, I guess it's happy. Uh, this place for generations and generations was Tower Records. This white building right here. This was the yellow and red Tower Records. Now it's Supreme and there's a skateboard park inside. Lots of good energy there. And there's a helicopter on a billboard. Oh, no big deal. For Extraction 2 on Netflix up there. And then we're coming up on the Viper Room on the left-hand side. Now Johnny Depp. That's a story about the Viper Room. Here it is. What I wanted out of the Viper Room, I mean, first and foremost, wouldn't it be great to have a place that you could go to where you weren't necessarily um, on display all the time or you didn't feel like a, a, a novelty, you know? You didn't have to sneak in and sneak out and, you know, hide and all that. And you could listen to the music you know, that you and your friends like. All right, now, the only building that has the distinction of being inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, this is the Whiskey A Go Go on the right hand side. Yes! yes. yes. We got Go Go Girls back here! Right. Wanna be dancing! <laughs> we came back in the 60s. Oliver Stone <laughs> shot the doors here. Uh, very good location. Rock and Riley's right here on the right. This is an Irish pub. David Spade is a regular there. And David Spade stars as Joe Dirt. And I love Joe Dirt. And I don't care who knows it. What? Okay, look over to this wall. You're going to see uh, Elvis Presley. 
Johnny Cash, Fleetwood Mac, Leonard Skinner, they're all etched into that wall. This is the Rainbow Bar and Grill, and this is the place where Guns N' Roses stayed alive because the Maglieri family fed them pizzas. They had really good food there. Hey, I know those dudes. Uh, on the right-hand side, uh, left-hand side, that's Mark Mulhoney's Shamrock Tattoo. That's where Dell gets her tattoos, Harry Style. Uh, also, uh, Megan Fox got her Marilyn Monroe tattoo right there. Okay, on the right-hand side, you have a nightclub that was once called um, the Key Club, and also One Oak, yeah. one of a kind, and this was used in Night at the Roxbury. Watch. Okay, can you guys see dead ahead um, a white building that says Emser Tile? Can, can anyone see that way in the back? Okay, you see that? That is where our next movie location is. Uh, we're going to think back to 1987. The movie is called Lethal Weapon. Mel Gibson, Danny Glover. Did you leave us? I'm jumping. Do you really want to jump? Do you want to? Well, then that's fine with me. Come on. Let's do it. Let's Wait a do minute. It. What? I want to do it. Crazy? I want to do it. What do you mean? Uh, 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 Yes, that is why the Film Freak Movie Locations Tour exists, right there. Hope you guys enjoyed that. That was 1987. The Oprah Winfrey Network leases a lot of the sound stages out here. And the special effects departments, they do amazing things to make uh, little things look huge. Look at this on the right-hand side. Look at this water tower filmed up close. Look at all the detail on that. All right. And now, I've got to take you to old Hollywood. This place, the Formosa Cafe, beautifully restored by the 1933 group. Look at this place, brought back to its original luster. And, okay, you see that Pacific electric train car? That is the last one like it in existence in the entire world. Now. On the lot, right over here, this is where Marilyn Monroe did Some Like It Hot, right here. But Elvis Presley made a lot of films here too. Him and Colonel Tom Parker, his manager, would walk to the Formosa Cafe, and there is an Elvis booth, and there's red leather booths there. There's uh, black and white publicity photos up there. Even Bugsy Siegel the Gangster has a safe in the Formosa Cafe. It's in one of the booths. And if you ask them, they'll show it to you. It's behind glass. There's money in it and a plaque in it. And it really shows some of the history uh, of Hollywood. And L.A. Confidential was filmed right there. One scene right here, right now. Want an autograph? Write to MGM. Since when do two-bit hoods and hookers give out autographs? What did you say to me? LAPD, sit down. Here it is, on the right, guys. You're a passionate person. You just keep denying it. You're covering up. Why don't you just relax and give in to it? Full service or self-service, Harris? Full service, Tony. Well, at Starbucks, you need your fuel one way or the other. Now I'm going to take you to one of the oldest studios in Hollywood, Sunset Las Palmas. This is the studio where they filmed season one and season two of I Love Lucy. Now, Sunset Las Palmas soon was renamed Desi Lou Las Palmas. Lucy and Desi were very enterprising, and they soon took over the studio. So here it is. They left the old-fashioned lighting fixtures up here. This is where they filmed the beginning of The Player with Tim Robbins. And here it is. I said, you know what? I'm going to find out who the head writer is. 
and I found out the head writer was right there. Rick Dees was broadcasting live. And I said something to the effect of, hey, look, I don't mind these cockroaches in Puerto Vallarta, but they're kind of big. One crawled in my bed last night and kicked his leg over me. And he thought that was funny, and he wrote it down, and he said it to Rick, and Rick said it five minutes later. And that's when I started my internship, during that trip. So that black building right there with the reddish, that is 6255 Sunset Boulevard, right there. Okay? So that's where I got my start. Now it's behind the tree. But um, here he is, my old boss, Rick Dees. Morning, Los Angeles. It's Phil Collins here. Hanging with Rick Dees in the morning. Kiss FM. Hey, what's up? It's Rick Dees, better known as Rick Dees in the morning. I got my start at 6255 Sunset Boulevard, the same place as Leo Quinones oh. Jr. did, better known as Leo the Q. He does the greatest tours of anybody. And like I love to say, Rick Dees in the Weekly Count 40 Countdown and with Disco Duck. <laughs> Leo Quinones, the Q-Man, is going to give you a great time, and he's number one. And then there is the Paramount wow. Water Tower right up there. But now you guys are our new movies. That's what we keep saying. Yeah. Thank you guys, power to the people, being part of the protest. In 1922, uh, this place up on the left, this Best Buy, this Target, this Jersey Mike sub, that is all gone. I want you to think of that as trees, shrubbery, and grass. That is where the 1922 film Robin Hood, that's where they, that was Sherwood Forest, right there. Douglas Fairbanks was the star and the thing about that production, Robin Hood, is they fed all the extras on the west side, the west side of the production, inside of a train car. The very same train car that I showed you that became the Formosa Cafe. So there you have it, right there. To the right is the Hollywood Center Motel, a place for movies, mayhem, and possibly murder. So, um, Buffalo Springfield used to stay here back in the day. Uh, Jimi Hendrix stayed here once. So, it is, uh, it looks like it could be in the middle of Indiana, some highway in Indiana. So, anyways, we're here. So, I'm going to play a scene from LA Confidential. So, Russell Crowe is walking along this fence right here and walks into the corner where there is a bump. On the left hand side, crossroads of the world. Now, this is where. I got my star writing the Rick D's Weekly Top 40 Countdown. We said, Leo, you're going to be working in these cool 1930s writer's bungalows. And I thought, that sounds great. So I went there, and I realized 1930s writer's bungalows is another word for small rooms. I have to give listeners a reference point of where you are at. So that's why you always heard Bob Hope say, Hey, this is Bob Hope coming to you live from Hollywood and Vine." Pretty, pretty awesome. So we're gonna look at the base of the Capitol Records building. There's a jazz mural there with Nat King Cole, Miles Davis, and uh, Ella Fitzgerald. And there was a scene from Rush Hour with Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker. Take a look. I didn't say I didn't. You assume I didn't. Assume I kick your little Beijing ass right now, man. I ain't scared of you. I know you know that little tricky. <laughs> I'm not responsible for your assumption. All right. Uh, on the right hand side, this building right here with the window uh, on the uh, right hand side, that was used in Get Shorty with uh, Gene Hackman and John Travolta. And uh, that was Harry Zip's films right up there. And a poster of Angelique. Angeline, way up top. All right, now it's time for the best martini in Hollywood. This is called the Musso and Frank Grill, over 100 years old. Leonardo DiCaprio, Brad Pitt, Al Pacino all had a meal here in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. On the right-hand side, and right here where we're driving, uh, this is the Vogue. This is the end of Lethal Weapon where the general 
barbecued himself right here. And this is where Richard Gere picked up Julia Roberts and Julia uh, in uh, Pretty Woman. So what happened after I climbed up the tower and rescued her? Okay, on we go to Michelli's, the oldest Italian restaurant in Hollywood. Now, that place JFK ate there, but that was also uh, a place where they filmed a scene in the movie called Knocked Up with Seth Rogen and Katherine Heigl. That's where they had their date. And also in the original Terminator, in the beginning, Linda Hamilton's character, Sarah Connor, is she's eating and she's at a bar and she's watching a newscast and she says, don't turn it off, don't turn it off. That is where that was shot, the original Michelli's. And um, back in the day, I would do anything to get on a TV show. So I tried out for a dating show called Studs. And I was, that's where I had one of my Studs dates, right there. So next to that is called Mr. Tempo now, but for generations and generations, that was called a pig and whistle. And the pig and whistle was a great place for the stars to get a shot. Movie? Then a shot. Movie, then a shot. But what is Shirley Temple supposed to do? A quick-thinking bartender filled ice with lemon-lime soda, cherry syrup, and a cherry. And he said, here you go, Shirley Temple. That is the very first place the Shirley Temple was ever served. Right there at the Pig and Whistle. And that concludes the Film Freak Movie Locations Tour. Oh no, stop it, thank you guys. Leo, thank you so much for inviting us down onto the tour, we had a blast. Uh, tell everybody real quick, if they wanna take this tour, how do they find you? Oh, it's really easy, just go to filmfreak.com, book a tour, and we're waiting for you, and we're gonna show you an amazing time. Thanks so much. Thank you, and thank you so much to our driver. Oh, I caught him hydrating, getting some water. Thank you. Okay, so that's it, the Film Freaks movie tour. We had a great time, uh, two hours driving around Hollywood. We saw a lot of different stuff. Uh, like I already mentioned, the van itself is great. Super clean van, everything is really nice in there. Uh, he's got the sound bars on every row where you can control the volume. There's ports to charge your phone. He actually offers you charging cables. Uh, so anytime throughout the tour, if you need one, you can just ask him for a charging cable. I mean, how nice is that? I had actually just done another Hollywood tour a couple of weeks ago. Um, before that, I had never done one. The tour we took today was actually supposed to be my first, but a couple of weeks ago, uh, Adam the Woo asked me if I wanted to go on this adventure with him and we went on one of those Hollywood sightseeing tours. Um, and I can tell you that that van was nothing like the van that we rode in today. That one there was like rusty metal sticking out everywhere. Like I almost cut my arm at one point. I think in Adam's video he showed right next to him there was a really big nasty hair. Um, so definitely night and day. This, this van, really clean. Uh, everything was very professional. Leo, uh, he's the owner and he's the one that gives the tour. Super nice guy, very knowledgeable. Uh, he's interacting with you throughout the tour, making sure that everybody is having a good time and everybody's happy. So definite thumbs up, 10 out of 10 as far as that goes. So I'd say for the average person, you're gonna love this tour. If you're a filming location fanatic like I am, you might not learn quite as much, but I think you'll still have a good time. But for the average person, definitely, if you're coming in from out of town, or even if you live here in LA, I do recommend going on this tour. Uh, if you're a movie fan, I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, now, if you wanna do one of those tours where you see the supposed homes of celebrities and you know go by like the Beverly Hills stores and stuff like that, this is not the tour for you. Uh, if you want to see a tour that is specifically about movies and Hollywood and filming locations, definitely do the Film Freaks filming location tour. Okay, so that's it. Again, thank you to Leo and to our driver for showing us around Hollywood. We had a great time. If you decide to take the Film Freaks tour, make sure you tell them 80s Life sent you. I mean, you don't get a discount or anything special like that. I just want you to tell them that I sent you. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.
So as I'm filming this video right now, um, one, two, three, four cars down, there is a, uh, there's a woman pooping in the gutter. She's, she's <laughs> sitting on the curb and, uh, and yeah, she's pooping. I, I'm just, I, I gotta be honest, it's breaking my concentration a little bit. And also Brad Pitt has an office on the Watt. So his production company is called Plan 9 Productions. So here we go, Desi Lou Kawinga. Oh my God. 